Hi, I'm Ashley Vance, and welcome to my living room here in California. We've got about seven rolls of toilet paper left, and two wonderful boys helping out, filming me right over here. We obviously can't do Hello World like we normally would, so this is the from home version. We thought we'd try to take this challenge as an opportunity to take all our viewers on, on kind of a trip around the world to see what different inventors and scientists and technologists are up to. The first place we're gonna head is to New Zealand. I've got a friend there named Michelle Dickinson. She's a scientist who has been out front talking about the virus. So off we go to New Zealand first to meet Michelle. My name is Dr. Michelle Dickinson and I am a nanotechnologist having worked in the tech sector for 20 years around the world. And a couple of years ago, I decided to quit my hardware job and move to helping educate kids and parents about science and technology and get more kids involved who might not see themselves as scientists or engineers. We were a company who traveled around the world with our live theater shows and our school teacher training programs. And then that died, so yay. <laughs> Thanks COVID. So this hits and your business has to change. And so what have you done? What have you, have you adapted on the fly? We said to our team, what do people need in this lockdown? And as we saw schools were closing, we spoke to teachers and they said, we've never done online teaching before. We don't know what that is. And, we, and they said, the thing we're gonna drop first is STEM, so science and technology. They said, that's too hard for us to do online. I just said, well, this is what we do. How can we help provide something to um, kids to help them build their confidence in STEM? Hi, I'm Nana Gill, and I want to be a <laughs> superhero. And so we developed an online platform that basically helps kids build their science superpowers. This week, the superpower I'm trying to get is the power to fight baddies like viruses. Ugh. I saw some of the first lessons were, were about COVID, what is it, and making kind of your own special soap to deal with it. It's so simple, but parents were like, my kids won't wash their hands, I need to motivate them. We said, well, if you make this superpower soap where it's got that superhero sticker in it, they'll get superpowers every time they touch this soap. And parents have said, literally, the kids love their soap, they're washing their hands all the time to get superpowers. And it just helped to motivate them. Look at that, we destroyed our fatty, the virus is destroyed, you are the superhero. Our kids, actually, they've sort of accepted all this really well, I feel like, but it is, it's nuts. And you're lucky, actually, right, because you're tech savvy, but there are millions of parents around the world who science and tech wasn't their thing. And they go back to their 13-year-old fearful self of a Bunsen burner and a Petri dish when we talk about it. And so we're all about how do we empower those people, those people who haven't touched science, but 40 years maybe, to be able to have these conversations about viruses and how you transfer it and what they actually are and what they could do without it being too fearful. Because we understand when we're talking to kids, we've got to help them understand that it's serious, but also not induce so much anxiety that they become petrified of everything. And how, so how do people find this? So nanogirlslab.com is how you basically find it. We're on all of the channels, social, you name it. Destroy the virus buddies, yay! You can look at our free stuff and if you want to subscribe, you can. If you can't afford to, just press the I can't afford to do this button um, and we'll try and give you free access. As some of the lockdowns started, I caught you on the, the internet with, with the prime minister in New Zealand. It seemed like you were educating people about, about COVID. and Yeah, so luckily, I guess New Zealand has been slightly behind the COVID curve in that we've got to watch other countries do their thing and use a lot of data. We have a Prime Minister who has worked really hard on communication. She's brought me into that team to communicate to the nation about what is COVID, what should we do, how can we help each other. Lots of people are getting questions around how to explain what this is to children. So the easiest way to explain it is if your child has had the common cold, for example, they would have had a virus that had a dangly bit that attaches to our nose and it would have stuck to our nose and made them sick. The COVID-19 we're talking about, it has a different dangly bit and it attaches to our lungs. One of the things we've done really well in New Zealand, I think, is set up an alert system pretty early that said, here's the alert system, it's four levels, and here's where we are now, and this is what moving to the next levels will look like. That allowed everybody to prepare early. We're on a lockdown, but everybody seems to be playing ball, and our supermarkets are full of food because nobody panic bought because they knew what the message was early on. 
you locked down super early before there was kind of hardly any cases. And so this was wanting to be what, just, just incredibly proactive on this and, and sort of get ahead of things. Yeah, and communication has been great. We haven't just communicated to, you know, those who watch politics. We did a press conference just for children in Parliament. That was really important because obviously children are a big part of this as well as everybody else. So our job as superheroes is to stop the virus from spreading. And we wanted to include them in the conversations so that they were also going to take part in this and understand their role. Just, I mean, as a scientist, you know, how, how close attention are you paying to how this is spreading and, and the treatments? And is this something that you're really following deeply? Look, I'm a nanotechnologist and a virus is literally as nanotech as you get. So I'm interested for many reasons. One, I'm interested as a communicator as to how to explain the world of the tiny and the invisible, which is what I've done my whole life, to everybody else. Because I can understand how it might seem really scary that there's this invisible pathogen that might, you know, be fatal to us. I think our scientific literacy as a population has decreased over the past 10 years as we haven't focused on science. And so I'm just focused on making sure that some of these complex medical journal publications are actually you know, explained in a way that people can help them to understand their life at home. What can I do to control my environment and my bubble to keep my family safe? I mean, the U.S., we have this explosion in cases right now, but I'm, I am deeply curious about sort of how the U.S. is being perceived overseas. Well, look, I think different countries are dealing with it in different ways. And I think that's pretty sad, actually, because this is a worldwide virus. I mean, the virus has, it's apolitical um, and it doesn't care about countries' borders. And I think this is really a time when we should be pulling together and not trying something out and seeing what happens. If there's inspiration in any of this, it seems to be the the way science has, has, has come through all over the world, you know, how quickly um, this got sequenced, how quickly we we're working on, on detection and vaccines. I mean, is, is there going to be, you know, some good that comes out of this a year from now? Look, I hope so. I'm also seeing some bad coming out of it. I think the lack of scientific literacy means everybody believes everything that's coming in and not able to have that scientific literacy to go, is this a good or a bad idea? How do I look this up? I've talked to a couple companies, they've got vaccines and animal trials, and they're telling me, look, we know this is safe. If we don't have to go through the arduous process, we could get this to people much more quickly. So the thing with a vaccine, and anytime you modify something in the body, you are literally changing a person's immune system. And that has two outcomes. The great outcome is it makes you hopefully protected against what the, is this virus right now. But there's also an adverse reaction in that we don't know how it's going to affect your immune system in a different way. So what if we vaccinate everybody against COVID, but suddenly you're more susceptible to something else? And that's why long-term clinical trials become really important. It's those side effects that we need to look at. Okay, this is Bowie. This is Tucker. Hey, Bowie and Tucker. Did you guys have any questions about how New Zealand is dealing with the virus or about the virus in I general? Mean, Michelle is a I'm scientist. How much on quarantine are you? So it's super serious here. So we have to stay at home unless we are going to the supermarket and only one person from our home is allowed to go to the supermarket. You can't take everybody else or you're going to the pharmacy to pick up drugs. You're allowed to go for a small walk every day, but that is it. So all of our online shopping is off. You cannot order anything online unless it's medical or food. All the takeout shut. So everybody can only buy food from the grocery store and then has to cook it at home. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty strict. Um, well, I think we are going to try to make one of your, uh, we're going to go through one of the experiments. I think we're going to try to make the, the yeah. plane. It's my favorite. Make the catapult plane. We're going to do that. And thanks so much for spending time with us. Thank you. Stay safe. Why don't we make a paper plane that gets its thrust and its power not from an engine, but from an elastic band. For this experiment, you will need scissors, tape, and a pencil. Start by measuring and drawing a rectangle, then cut it out. Fold your paper back. Place your elastic band into that hook. This is gonna be our launch mechanism Next, you want to draw a triangle on your piece of card. You're going to tape this bit to the underside of your plane. Now you're ready to launch. Three, 